Spend time with the Voices of Watch Collecting. A blog to watches team broaches the most important topics in timepiece enthusiasm today. This is the Spending Time Show. Hey everyone, Ariel Adams here with the Spending Time Podcast. Um, I am joined by a blog to watches David Breden. Hey. Hey everyone. Okay, so um, it has been a crazy week for blog to watch. We have <laughs> announced shows canceling, and then we've announced more shows canceling, and just at the end of everything, we thought we weren't going to Switzerland for like <laughs> an entire year. Out of the blue. Um, we get a couple of emails on the same day from a few brands that are going to formally yet informally show uh, in Geneva on April 26th to the 29th. So they're calling it Geneva Watch Days. Mm -hmm. And we're going to actually talk about that in another episode a little bit. But one of the things that they said in there, which is quite interesting, is joined by a few brands. Actually, let me see exactly how did they say it. The Geneva Watch Days will bring together several important brands, including Cher Perigo, Gero Genta, Ulysse Nadam, Breitling, MBNF, The Batoon, and Ulrich and Bulgari. And other independent brands. Mm -hmm. um, okay, you know, and, and we're reading through that, and uh, Gerald Genta is mentioned there. And I was like, is this a, is this like a typo? Like, do they just, do, yeah. do people talk about J.L. Argento watches so much, someone forgot it's not a brand? <laughs> <laughs> which, you know, you know what? And the insanity which is going on right now, it could be that. Yes. But two emails from two different companies both had it in there. And I know that Bulgari was wanting to do something very exciting. They were excited about this and they were very upset when Watches and Wonders Geneva got canceled. And we also know that it's Bulgari that was the lead in Geneva Watch Days. It was uh, Jean-Christophe Baban, who uh -huh. is the CEO of Bulgari. And he is the one that I understand was really the big, the big push. He needed, other, he needed help, but he was the one that basically got Geneva Watch Days. He's basically like, hey, everyone, let's just go back to the way it used to be and have some meetings in the hotels, which is basically what this is. And it doesn't violate the rule that says, you know, you can't have more than a thousand people congregate in any one space. So yeah, it's a hotel anyway. Yep. So Bulgari owns the Gerald Genta name. They, they purchased the brand a little while ago and the brand basically died. They had it running for a while and then they subsumed it within... Bulgari, and so you had a, a, a certain number of watches. I think they're pretty cool that said yes. JL Genta and Bulgari both on the dial, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and then that all went away. And it, yeah, quietly was phased out. Um, not everyone was happy about that, actually, but that's what happened. Well, you know, Bulgari once in a while brings back some of those watches, but you're right, not everyone is, is happy about that. And Bulgari's most popular watch. Is is the Octo for men, and the Octo is a Gerald Genta design. So that leaves the question: Is Bulgari and its you know parent company LVMH going to launch a Gerald Genta brand? Um, are they? Is that what the big news was going to be? Is that what they were trying to say here in this little announcement in a sneaky way? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm asking you. I mean. What do you think? Is is this is this confirmation or at least a uh, strong hint that there might be a Gerald Genta brand coming back? It is a strong hint. I'm just not sure what is there to be gained that there is not there to be gained back when they phased it out. So what's the point? Do they, the only thing I could imagine is like a niche thing to please collectors and watchers like us who know what Gerald Genta is and what it means and all that. And funnily enough, I, it was not just... Maybe it was about two or three days ago. I do this like once a month or something like that. I go on Chrono24, I go on eBay, and I look for Gerald Genta watches because the value, um, you know, the money, uh, the, the cost per design that you get there is, is amazing. You can find really amazing Gerald Genta watches, and there's so many cool designs by Genta that could be revived, and I would be happy to see revived. They're, modern. they're not cheap, though. Let's be honest. It's not all of them. There are some super I, cheap ones, but the cool yeah. ones, I mean, they're... They could be going for more, but it's not exactly an unwanted brand. 
It isn't, but it, you know, once you look at like a B retrograde or something like that, some some cooler models. You, if you get lucky, you can pick one of those up for like five, six grand, which is a lot of money. But it's a lot of watch too, and it's not boring, which is a rare thing these days. Right. So, so you're anyway, so when you're saying you don't know what's to be gained, what does that mean exactly? I mean, what is it that they could not do as Bulgari that they can do as Gerogenta? Well, look, I, I think the answer is really goes back to the notion of brand. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't need to have any brands. You could have a, just a few companies making various types of designs and stuff like that. But we know that buying a brand is an integral part in the process. Just like you buy a look, you buy a brand. Mm -hmm. And Gerald Genta is a name that's thrown around a lot. So let's say you're a marketing person <clears throat> and one of these brands. You're like, you know, people keep mentioning Gerald Genta all the time. And oh, he was he was known for designing the Nautilus. Oh, that there's a 12 year waiting list on that watch. Yeah. And he's known for designing the Royal Oak. Oh, that's that's the brand that made Audemars Piguet Audemars Piguet. Like they wouldn't be here today without the Royal Oak. Oh, and his his stuff is like seen as being masterful. And oh, and he's 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 launched this entire movement of the integrated steel you know sports watch steel bracelet sports watch so if you're just a marketing person you'd be like oh and someone owns the name to that brand i think you get excited because you know that popular things sell well in the watch space right now so this is known and you also know that there's no current brand that's taking advantage of gerald genta so if you are you own the gerald genta name you know that the two people that are primarily benefiting from that are Audemars Piguet and Patek Philippe. It's completely different companies. And you're hmm. like, I need to get in on that action of the brand whose name I own. Absolutely. So, you know, so, so I agree with you that from a collector perspective, they're, you're, we're like, so what are they going to make? Like more Geficas? Which would be <laughs> cool. But, yeah. you know, like that was never a commercially successful watch. It was crazy and cool, but like, you're right. What are they going to do? But again, from a marketing perspective, if you're a business person and you're thinking about what would make sense, it yeah. kind of it kind of does. The retro sport, you know, I think the retro line, it, it, that's what it was called actually, uh, you know, in uh, you know, uh, agenda's terms, and also the arena. Those are the two versions that I would love to see return. Um, they already have a bunch of like dressy options, and maybe they will reach back. Don't forget the forth. Disney ones, the best yeah. Disney watches ever 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 made and what you what you said about owning the brand bulgari paid 37 point something million to strengths in 2000 for Gerogenta and daniel roth so that's, once you that's I mean, a that's lot their, of money that's, that's their champagne budget though you know and well <laughs> it is, but <laughs> they, they, they actually have um Gerogenta right along with the with the champagnes in stock but they are not really doing anything with it so i i can see why they reach back why just it's just a good thing to ponder what is it that they want to do with it. And uh, so what do you think? Is it dressy or is it sporty that they're going to bring back? Well, I mean, look, it's going to be a steel watch with a bracelet. I don't think that they're going to bring back what wasn't popular from him. Right. They're going to go straight for the, like, predictable, you know, three-hand. They're going to take what intellectual property they have. You know they're gonna do what the collector wants. Yep. They're not gonna they're not gonna make this too intellectual. They're not gonna make it too risque. They're not gonna say like, oh, these are the lost Gerald Genta designs that no one's made before. N no, maybe later. Yep. They're gonna go to something that they feel is a hit right now. My and, money's on the arena, actually. I think that 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 is that is where it's at. But I could be wrong. I, I have no idea. Look, we could be speculating in the sense that this might just be like a sub-brand of Bulgari. You know, look at look, look at Ferdinand Berthoud from Chopard. Um, that's an ultra high-end thing. Bulgari has never done that well in selling very high-end watches, even though they've made some exceptionally interesting, crazy, complicated watches. Bulgari has some fantastic ones. And in addition to, you know, the Gerald Genta name, um, the Daniel Roth, right? They also own Daniel Roth. So yes. Bulgari has the ability to make wildly complicated tourbillons, automatons, minute repeaters, wild stuff that nobody seems to want. And this mm -hmm. is a common problem. So maybe Gerald Genta is the brand 
that they create for all the ma massively high complications. And then Bulgari is where you have the Octos and the you know the mostly under twenty thousand dollar watches. Right. That's an, that's another thing that they might do because again, it's it's sort of an uphill battle when you're known for being like department store like cosmetics also selling you know a a five hundred thousand dollar you know very elaborate elaborate sauna rewatch i mean yeah bulgari already has the auto luxury part, uh, you know section and some of their actually a lot of those designs are indeed argenta based oh yeah the, the the arena you know um is still produced in whatever form it is now by bulgari yes that's true, but only in, in, in ultra high end form like sonneries and, and, and crazy stuff like that. Yeah, but I'm just saying, can you see how LVMH and Bulgari might want to segment off its super high complication stuff into a brand that is quote unquote known by enthusiasts for that? Sure, that would make sense. I agree. From a marketing standpoint, it could work. I mean, look, they could screw it up a bunch of ways. Um, <laughs> now, Here's a question. What do you think Audemars Piguet and Patek Philippe would want from a Gerald Genta brand? Like, they rely very heavily on a positive perception of this person's <laughs> legacy. Wouldn't and it would be hilarious if, <laughs> if Bulgari launched a Gerald Genta Nautilus. <laughs> I think that's not precisely what Patek would want. Like, hey guys, you're seeing that there's a strong market for this, so here it is for like 15 grand and all still not, it was that says you're agenda on the dial. Oh my look, god, that would be out of control. Look, I all I'm saying is that if you are Audemars Piguet or Patek Philippe, you're going to have an opinion in one way or another that's going to have an impact on your business about yeah. a Gerald Genta brand. Maybe it can help you, maybe it can hurt you, maybe it's just a competitor. Look, yeah, it, it, I think it's it's the last one. I, I really don't think that Bulgari will will dig deep into search into archives and find the quirkiest, weirdest, you know, least appealing designs that Genta did. Of which there were a few. Let's be fair. I was <laughs> the point of, of doing that. No, they're going to cherry pick the best ones if they are to do this. And in that way, you know, if that is to happen, I don't think uh, AP and um, Patek would mind, especially if. They stay out of that price range, which is, you know, the Royal Oak and the Nautilus price range. Well, again, Gerald Genta had some very expensive watches under that brand. There was minute repeaters, there was turbions, there was yeah. crazy stuff. So nothing's really off the list of options. I think the more challenging play, even though it could potentially be more commercially successful, is to introduce a new competitor to the existing Gerald Genta watches out there, right? So if the new Gerald Genta brand comes in with a Royal Oak Nautilus competitor, that would be really something. Yes, absolutely. We'll 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 have to see. I think that that's the, you know we we could we could ponder on this for for ages, but we, we'll see this soon enough. Late April is the time for it. Yeah, late April of 2020, uh, around the 24th, 25th, 26th, or something like that. Yes. We believe that there's going to be. Um, some interesting news from Bulgari, and that interesting news might be the introduction of something related to Gerald Genta. They have announced that a Gerald Genta brand is going to be at Geneva Watch, Watch Days, <laughs> April 26th, 29th. Multiple companies have said this. Is it a typo and just a mistake because this was all rushed? Yeah, maybe, but maybe Let's it isn't. Yeah. So... New Gerald Genta watches or initiatives or even an entire new brand might be coming. We have no idea what the watches are going to be, um, but we'll look forward to seeing what that is very soon. Um, and you'll definitely see coverage of it on a blog to watch. Thanks. That's right. See you there. Bye, everyone.